soccer is the most popular game in the world, but a game where it takes a long time to get to the top. In fact, it takes four years of playoffs just to eliminate the losers and a 52-game tournament to crown a world champion. Tomorrow, that tournament, the World Cup of Soccer, begins in Mexico. And for the first time ever, a Canadian team has earned a chance to compete. They're a motley crew. One of them is a water meter repairman, another one is unemployed, and only a few are professional players. For the members of Team Canada, the road to Mexico was paved with public apathy and meager financial support. But as the journal's Jerry Thompson reports, the players are Canada's Team Hopeful. The bookies in London are betting a thousand to one against them. And the cynics say it was a fluke they even made it this far. But Team Canada, the first Canadian team ever to qualify for the World Cup soccer tournament, has been working out for weeks on the march to Mexico. And frankly, they don't much care what the cynics think about their chances. Getting ready for the toughest competition in the world is a fascinating ritual. Lots of grunting and yelling and running around, trying to make up in physical fitness what they lack in experience. Just last week in Vancouver, Team Canada's big send-off parade fizzled. They borrowed a marching band, they borrowed cheerleaders from the BC Lions football team. A crowd was the only thing they couldn't borrow. 20! Only 20 minutes to go. So they threw a parade, nobody came, and Team Canada took it on the chin with a smile. The fickle fans were only part of the problem. Lack of money prompted newspaper columnist Jim Taylor to nickname these guys Team Tin Cup. They're underfinanced. I think the government has been terribly slow about jumping in. And so I just, I have this vision of this team on the highway, sort of thumbing rides to Mexico City and holding out little tin cups and saying, alms, alms, can we go to, you know, it's, it's, it's really not the way to do it. In the crowded hallway of a Burnaby motel, Team Canada was still sorting through boxes, measuring new uniforms, and trying on jackets only days before departure to Mexico. Judging by this organized chaos, the trip to the World Cup caught everybody by surprise. There is corporate and government support now. The guys do get a bit of meal money after all, but it has been an uphill struggle, according to CBC sportscaster Steve Armitage. I would call them team determination, team hopeful, because I think they've been so determined to get to Mexico over the last two or three years. They are so hopeful that once there, they will be able to do for Canadian soccer what no other Canadian team has ever been able to do in the past, and that is put soccer at the top of the sports page. <laughs> Holding this team together has been no easy trick. Because with no more professional soccer in North America, most of Team Canada's players have no place to work full-time. Some were hired by American indoor soccer teams, some are students, and some, like Randy Reagan, are basically unemployed. It's just when we qualified, uh, uh, a few of our players found ourselves unemployed. Our club had, had folded, and, uh, and so we just hung on. I mean, we didn't want to pass up for the opportunity to play in the World Cup, so we just hung on and trained every day. And George Pecos repairs water meters for the city of Victoria and has been granted seven leaves of absence to play for Team Canada. All I can say is that we're going to do our best and hopefully we can uh, make those odds makers lose their house and their shirt and everything. And Team Captain Bruce Wilson, a 34-year-old veteran, figures he'll go out in a blaze of glory. This is my 13th year of playing for Canada and my third try at trying to make the World Cup final. So it's obviously a, a highlight of my career and, and really what a better way to retire than uh, finishing it off in the World Cup final. Real hardcore soccer fans insist that you'd have to combine the Stanley Cup, the Super Bowl, the World Series and the Olympics to get any idea how significant the World Cup of soccer really is. Soccer is the most popular game in the world, most popular everywhere but North America. Here, Team Canada struggles to get organized. A few years ago, the Pro Soccer League collapsed in a financial mess. And yet the perfect irony to all this is that kids soccer in North America is the fastest growing sport of all.
plastered wet hair, soggy boots, and steamy breath. They play rain or shine in the great outdoors, and probably the best part of all, they do it in broad daylight. Now that means parents can forget about the 5 a.m. wake-up call so that Junior can make ice time at the local arena. It's less violent than hockey, fewer injuries, cheaper, and better exercise. A good player runs 10 miles in an average game. The popularity of soccer has tripled in the last 10 years. It's second only to hockey and quickly closing the gap. They go away. Get up Canada has no hired guns, no high-priced superstars, and they don't really expect to win in Mexico. But if they do manage to put on a respectable show, they'll figure the trip was worth it. For The Journal, this is Jerry Thompson.